The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill, and we are in the middle of December already. It's December 15th. Christmas is right around the corner, but we got tons of sports to talk about, tons of stuff going on. College football, we are in a little bit of a low period, but there's a few news and notes um, with the new transfer portal and a couple, couple big news items. And then uh, we'll get back into college basketball, which we haven't talked about in a couple weeks. And then we'll get into NBA and NFL picks. So, starting off, college football, we got the number one prospect in college football, cornerback, has decided he's going to Jackson State with Deion Sanders. His name is Travis Hunter, <laughs> by the way, just to let people know. Yes, Malik, Travis Hunter. Malik broke the news yeah. for me today. Um, so, yeah. Um, decided to go from big name school and is now going to Jackson State. Uh, wait, did you say it was Florida or S- Florida State? Florida State. Yeah. Okay. That's where he had been committed there for almost a year. Yeah. And it seemed like it was locked in until like today. Nobody saw this coming. No. Um, that's big news for Jackson State and Deion Sanders. Uh, trying to do some things that haven't been done before, getting big name recruits down there so we'll see how that works out for them um maybe jackson state will start getting some bigger bigger teams to play uh which would be very interesting um yeah do you see this changing anything else for prospects going forward do you think that's gonna we've already seen it a little bit in basketball where a lot more uh big names are going to hbcus so do you think it's gonna transfer over to football now with this, I do think there is a change coming. I don't know how big it could be. Deion Sanders at Jackson State is just is the one example of a big time legend in football going to an HBCU and completely turning things around instantly. They just went eleven and one. They won the con- their the SWAT conference. They're going to be playing in the Celebration Bowl. But outside of that, yeah, Tennessee State hired Eddie George. Grambling just hired Hugh Jackson, who's a long time known NFL coach. Yep. They don't have the like the cachet and like the legendary status of Deion Sanders. No, no diss to Eddie George. Mm-hmm. Great NFL running back. But Deion, he's known as the GOAT yeah. in terms of cornerbacks in NFL history. Yeah. He's a big time personality, Florida State legend. Everybody loves him. And these kids, these kids know who he is. They've seen him on TV for years. Even after he's been done playing, he's been talking, being an analyst for a long time. Mm -hmm. These kids want to play for one of the greatest players of all time. And a a guy that just seems like an all-around great dude to be around. And just an entertaining person. Right. So he's he's like the full package Mm -hmm. in terms of a person, a coach, and a guy that's building a culture at Jackson State. He's already had a bunch of D1 guys transferring into Jackson State. His son just won freshman of the year in the FCS as a quarterback, Shador Sanders. They got it rolling at Jackson State, but this is unprecedented. And I'm not sure if we'll start seeing like top 10 recruits just picking HBCUs every year from now on. But this type of move opens the eyes of not only players, but FCS coaches and FBS coaches that this is possible now. Mm Mm-hmm. Something like this can happen, especially with Deion Sanders. You can't sleep on him in Jackson State anymore. You have to try and make sure you have you a kid. So to, I'm I'm pretty sure Florida State didn't see this coming at all. Yeah. So it really sucks, and the fans have just been losing their minds on online and on Twitter, which is hilarious to me 
Yeah. But yeah, it, it kind of sucks that FSU has been down for a few years. And even though they, they do have a good recruiting class coming in, Travis Hunter would have helped them a ton. But this this will cause some change. Mm-hmm. I don't think everything is just going to flip upside down all of a sudden. But Travis Hunter, he's going to play for the greatest DB of all time as a corner. He's going to make a ton of money off of NIL. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'm honestly, everybody's asking about what his development will be, if he'll turn into the player everybody thinks he'll be. The talent is obviously unquestioned. Mm-hmm. He's the number one player in the country, 24-7, number two ESPN rankings. It's all there. He was probably going to start at Florida State from the jump. So talent isn't a question. But it is going to be interesting seeing what happens with him at Jackson State these next few years because what if Deion Sanders leaves for a bigger job? Right. Does it, all just, does it all just fall apart at Jackson State all of a sudden? Yeah. If he stays – does he get a few more four-star guys and potentially another five-star guy? I think it's possible since he's just showed us this is something he can do. Right. So there are changes coming. Mm-hmm. I don't think it'll be anything extremely huge, but there will be there will be more players going to and considering HBCUs straight out of high school. Yeah, and I do think it's gonna be, it's it's tougher in football too because when you think in terms of basketball. One guy can change a whole team, whereas in football, you have so many players and positions that one guy is not going to necessarily turn around a team. But as we've seen, like you said, Deion Sanders has turned more around for that, I think, than the players. But getting bigger name players will also make these next coming uh, classes maybe at least take a closer look and maybe start to change things. So that'll be interesting. He had a clear plan from the time he stepped on that campus. Yeah. And it's working out better than anybody could have ever expected so far. Right. So, yeah, congrats to Dion. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see how that uh, pans out, but pretty big news. Um, On the other note, a guy that was already in college football, uh, one that was a Heisman favorite preseason. and yeah, A lot uh, of hype. A lot of hype. Lost his job towards the end of the season. Spencer Rattler, projected number one overall pick in the NFL this season. Definitely not happening now. Um, he decided he's transferring to South Carolina. That's pretty crazy. And his this st- Oklahoma starting tight end, Austin Stogner, also followed him there. Mm. So two huge pickups yeah. for Shane Beamer in South Carolina. But it would be very interesting to see how Spencer Rattler bounces back from this because it was – Pretty ugly towards the end. Like, the whole season, the way that it developed, to go from this guy that was projected number one pick, him and Sam Howell. We can maybe get to Sam Howell in a couple weeks when we start talking about draft stuff. But his season didn't go so well, got benched, and now he is transferring to South Carolina. We haven't seen South Carolina be what we've known them to be in a few years now. So yeah. I'm curious to see if he can maybe turn that team around. But at the same time, I'm nervous. Does he just keep falling off? And that that's a scary thing because South Carolina, you're still, I mean, you're not in an easy conference. So I don't know. He could make a bigger name for himself and, and bounce back from this, but I don't know. It's a crazy thing. I I don't think I've seen a number one prospect like this just turn into a guy that has to transfer out that I can think of at least. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a we're in uncharted territory. Mm-hmm. Something we've never seen. Some people think he was number one because he was in a down QB class. Right. Although his arm is elite and the talent is clear. Yeah. Caleb Williams, there were people that said Caleb Williams was better the moment he stepped on campus. Right. And as the year went on, it actually started to show. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Spencer, like I said, talent has never been the question. His attitude and his leadership skills have always been in question. Yeah. From the time he was on the reality show QB1, Mm -hmm. which followed high school, high level high school quarterbacks their last year of high school, he was a bit of a clown on there, a dude that played around a lot, would kind of, like, make fun of his teammates more than lift them up at times. Yeah. 
But his when he got his first chance at Oklahoma, he had a great freshman year. Mm-hmm. Over 3,000 yards, almost 30 touchdowns, less than 10 interceptions. Yeah. But then the hype came. And all of those red flags that people saw from the time he was young started coming out. Yeah. He would make a mistake and drop his head and just jog to the sidelines. It looked like they had no confidence on offense with him as quarterback. And his decision-making was being altered. It looked like he was mentally breaking down. Yeah. So he has a lot of growing to do mentally and honestly physically because he's only like six six one, like 190-something pounds. Right. But more mentally because yeah, it was clear the Caleb Williams of it all and the hype of it all really got to him. Yeah. And around midseason, it was all just too much for all his shoulders. Right. Now he's jumping to the SEC. Mm-hmm. They're not playing around. No. They're not playing. South Carolina's bringing in a really good recruiting class. They're gaining some momentum. Shane Beamer has them in a bowl game. People expected them to be bad this year. Mm -hmm. But South Carolina, like you said, they're they're still not where we saw them when we were younger in like the early 2010s. Right. It's going to be a big challenge. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. I'm – Really interested yeah, to see. Yeah, and this this will test his mental. Like, can he bounce back and yeah be that guy again? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, He's really going to be on the highest level now. Yeah. The um, last college football news that I wanted to talk about that we didn't get to last week. It was kind of on the docket if we got to it, but we didn't. Um, Quinn Ewers, uh, notably for going to Ohio State this season early so that he could get some NIL deals, has now transferred out to Texas. Yeah. Taking full advantage of the kind of, I don't know, the way to get around some of these things with the NIL and the transfer portal. Makes me nervous that other people are going to take advantage of it. But at the same time, we talked about it before. If college coaches can do it, why can't players do it? So I've kind of gotten over that fact. But it's just crazy to see that, you know, that that's already a thing that, that players are doing. They're going to try to go to college early. They're going to try to make their money, and then they're going to transfer to wherever they want to actually go, because obviously he's not going to take uh, C.J. Stroud's job. Yeah, he was he was committed to Texas first, right? Decommitted from there and went to Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. So crazy, I guess. Good, for, good for you to uh, take advantage of that. But we'll uh, we'll see how he does, because again, Texas is in that same boat where they're trying to turn their program around. So he's got a lot of pressure on him. Um, but we'll. We'll see. All right, college basketball. I'm going to let Malik take this one away because he wants to talk about his Michigan Wolverines and how they're doing in college basketball since we have last seen them. The last we saw, they just got knocked out of the top 25. Unfortunately, it hasn't gotten much better. Take it away. So (laughs) while Michigan football is doing the unthinkable, they beat Ohio State, won the Big Ten, and now they're getting ready for the playoffs. Something none of us saw coming. Michigan has been a basketball school for the past decade. Yes, mostly. they have. It's been all, well, disappointing football season. It's time for the basketball season. That's what we can depend on. Outside of a few down years with Beeline, they were consistently really good every year. Mm-hmm. Jawan Howard comes in, picks up where Beeline left off. Last year, they make the Final Four, almost get to the championship. Number one ranked recruiting class, Hunter Dickinson is back. A few other guys back. Isaiah Livers and Franz Wagner are gone, but still tons of talent. Everybody expects them to pick right back up where they left off. It's not looking like that right now. No, it's uh, not. Michigan sits at 6-4. and four. Mm-hmm. They were preseason top 10, top 5, according to some services and websites and analysts. They've just been wildly inconsistent. From one game to the next, they'll look really good. Then they'll look average. They'll look terrible in stretches. Then they'll look good again. The rotations aren't set. It seems like what Juwan wants to run on offense and defense isn't set yet. Young guys like Caleb Houston, look he looks good one game, and the next game he goes cold. Yeah, There's just no consistency with his team right now. And honestly, with the with the veterans that left and the key pieces that left, 
specifically Mike Smith, Franz Wagner, and Isaiah Livers, they were the glue pieces of the team last year. Yeah, Mike Smith was steady for almost the entire season. He was a dependable shooter and playmaker. Franz and Isaiah were both locked down on defense and could be trusted to make shots on offense. And then everybody around them played their roles to perfection. Plus Shondi Brown, who was just an absolute steal coming off the bench. Yeah. This year, most of the roster is freshmen and sophomores. You have three upperclassmen. Hunter Dickinson, Brandon Johns, and Eli Brooks. The rest, you got a bunch of kids. Mm -hmm. Some of them aren't even fully healthy yet, like Zeb Jackson. Sophomore who showed some promise last year. He's coming off injury. He's not found his groove yet. Hunter Dickinson is playing even better than he was last year. But they're struggling to get him the ball because he's the main focus every single game. Right. And he's getting double teamed half the time. Yep. Like I said, Caleb Houston, he looks like that five-star talent one game. The next game, he gets cold. Musa Diabate is a stud, but he can't do it all himself. He's not really an offensive force yet. He's better on defense than offense. Mm -hmm. Mike Smith leaves. Devontae Jones comes in from Coastal Carolina. He was a stud in the Sun Belt. Averaged like 19, like 6 and 4. He was player of the year in the conference. Looked like it was going to be another seamless fit. And it has been the complete opposite so far. He looks... He looks like he's struggling to, to figure out his identity in this offense as the point guard. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look like a very dependable shooter so far, and he turns the ball over a lot. He just looks indecisive, and he looks unsure a lot of the time. Yeah. I thought Michigan State would have more question marks, and that's, that's just not the truth right now. Yeah. Yeah, they, they beat up Minnesota at Minnesota. And then Michigan lost by 10 to Minnesota at home. Mm -hmm. They're just not consistent right now. They they don't know what their identity is. Yeah. And, and it's like we said at the beginning of the season, like this was going to be a real test for Jawan because we know that he had the talent, but he was going to, this was his first test of actually setting all the pieces in place the way that he wanted to do it. Um, the last year was still somewhat an iteration of what Beeline had set up uh, previously. So now Jawan is tasked with figuring this out all by himself. It's his program now. Right. And so I, I think that's what we're seeing right now uh, because he's people forget as good as he did last year, he's still very new to this. Yes. Uh, so I, I think it's still taking time. It is maybe going a little bit slower than I expected. Um, but I was actually the opposite. I thought Michigan State would be able to find their groove a little bit before because they brought so many guys back that have been been around, whereas Michigan didn't bring as many as they usually do, and they had a lot of new talent um, to, to bring in. So I'm not super surprised, but at the same time, surprised at some of the losses. Like you said, the Minnesota one um, is kind of tough. Yeah, especially – after getting beat up by North Carolina, which wasn't a surprise, right? You get a good win against San Diego State at home. Mm -hmm. Looks like things are coming together. Yep. Especially with taking out Devontae Jones and bringing in um, Frankie Collins, the freshman point guard. He brings in a lot more energy. You go to Nebraska and you just destroy them, mm -hmm. one hundred two to sixty seven. You shoot the lights out. The offense is moving like very smoothly yep the defense looks good looks like they're getting back on track mm -hmm. play minnesota you oh, can't you wow. can barely hit a three it's really it's really just two players that won the game for minnesota yeah jamison battle and peyton willis mm -hmm. neither guys are the like anywhere near the best players even in the conference yeah but they were just going off and couldn't miss in the second half yeah and while they couldn't miss michigan could barely make it mm-hmm they have stretches where they turn the ball over and can't make shots. And when those stretches happen, any talented team you play can get back in the game yeah. if they have shot makers. And Minnesota had two that just kept them moving the entire time. Yep. So you, know, you don't know what you're going to get from game from one game to the next with Michigan right now. And it's unfortunate, but with all the youth they have and the lack of overall experience – Eli Brooks and Brandon Johns are really the only true highlight, like upper upperclassmen. 
Yeah. And neither of them have been great so far this season. Mm -hmm. That's honestly been one of the most disappointing things. Eli should be one of the best shooters in the country, but he's hit or miss right now. Brandon John started out the season as a starter, and he just looked completely out of sorts. He looked like he regressed. He started playing better coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's just a lot to figure out right now. Yeah. The nice thing for Michigan is they do have an easy schedule to finish out the year. Yeah. Uh, they're going to play Southern Utah, then they're playing Purdue, Fort Wayne, and then UCF before they get into that really tough Big Ten tough, uh, schedule. Uh, because as they round the new year, they're going to play Rutgers, Michigan State, Purdue, Illinois. Yikes. Like, that's that's tough first four. That's where they need to be ready. Yeah, it, It'll be nice, hopefully, being 9-4 and four going into that Big Ten stretch. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm sure they're going to – kind of lose a couple, but I think they might surprise in some of these Big Ten games as well. Uh, so we'll just kind of have to wait and see. But we're starting to get to the point where it's going to get get nitty-gritty and they're going to have to get some wins, get some quality wins yeah. here. It's it's starting to look like this is going to be a team led by the young guys as mm-hmm. the season goes on. Yeah. Because you don't have any stars in the in terms of experience. Right. So, yeah, the the most talented guys are the younger ones. Yeah. And they're going to have to be the ones to step up when it matters most. Yep. And who knows? Like, again, like we talked about, they could do the thing where, like, what Michigan State did last year and, you know, get into that play in tournament and maybe make a little bit of a run, get something going, see what happens. So we'll just, we'll just have to wait and see um, and go from there. Um, real quick, I, I do want to talk about Michigan State for a minute. Uh, they are ranked number 12 right now, uh, they've, they've had some quality wins. Um and some okay wins. Uh, they beat. I think we talked about they beat Louisville in their ACC Big Ten Challenge. Then they beat uh, Toledo by uh, what is this twelve thirteen, and then they beat Minnesota, who was looking pretty good at the time. And then they just beat Penn State pretty handily over the weekend. The nice thing for Michigan State is that uh, it seems like Gabe Brown has kind of. Uh, stepped up recently. He's been more consistent, at least, in his games. Uh, Marcus Bingham had a huge game for uh, against Penn State. Only his second career double double though. That's shows you like how like the lack of uh, development that the that he's had. Yeah. So that's still concerning. And then again, though, it's it's for Michigan State. They've looked pretty solid. They've gotten away with wins, just being tough. But just. Some of these guys just not always having their A games ready to go. That third guy that they always like, they need somebody to step up, has been very inconsistent. Like we said before, Joey Hauser still kind of struggling with his, especially his three point shot, has not been good at all. Uh, Max Christie has shown some flashes here and there, but I don't know. He, he hasn't fully gotten. Turned into that guy. Yeah, Tyson Walker has been hit or miss at times too. Yeah, he either looks like really good or he he just disappears. Right. So they're all kind of there. They're all kind of doing all right, but they're still struggling at times. Yeah, they're they're just playing good like team basketball. Yeah. There's so, yeah, there's they're doing just enough. Right. Uh, they're the same as Michigan. They're not going to play anybody until they get into January when the Big Ten uh, schedule starts, and even when that starts, they don't have a tough Big Ten schedule, at least to start. They play Northwestern, then Nebraska, uh, then Michigan. They got a great draw to start. <laughs> yeah, then they got a they rematch. Really then they got a rematch against Minnesota. Um, but they don't play like they play Wisconsin later, Illinois later. Uh, they don't even play Purdue until February, the end of February. Oh, my gosh. So they got a lot of time. They don't play Ohio State, but once in March. So Michigan State has set themselves up for – at least a good record. I don't know if it's going to give us a good indication of who they're going to be, but it'll at least give them good momentum as we turn into the new year. So we'll have to see where they go from there. Um, again, college basketball has been so volatile. Baylor is now number one. Purdue held, held the number one spot for a game. Yes. One <laughs> game, and it ended up being a classic. Yep. Uh, Rutgers beat them on a last-second Hail Mary shot just 
going past half court. Pretty crazy. Um, and like like we said before, that's kind of what college basketball has turned into lately. Uh, so who knows? I, I'm sure Baylor's going to lose here pretty soon. It, just, it wouldn't surprise me at this point. Um, but they're nine and zero. They're looking pretty solid. Uh, they don't have too many guy, too many teams they have to play. They got Oregon on Saturday. Oregon is kind of average right now, so yeah. it shouldn't be a problem. But New Year's Day, Baylor will be playing Iowa State, and I will be so excited to watch that game. Um, yeah. the surprisingly State, good Iowa State. Iowa People St- expected them to finish last in the conference this year. Yeah, but Iowa, Iowa State. They've been uh, one of my favorite teams to. To watch um i mean they they beat iowa destroyed iowa so that was pretty cool um they only beat jackson state by 10 but it was a dog fight 37 to 47 it's kind of funny uh so yeah there's a few things there um other than that like duke purdue ucla gonzaga they're all kind of sitting there alabama's been playing pretty good um and then we got some teams we haven't seen in a while, like Arizona, nine and zero. They're at number eight. USC is up at number ten. Uh, they're ten and zero. So again, craziness of college basketball has already started. But like we said, once the new year starts, a lot of these teams are going to be into their conference schedules. Any other uh, notable college team you wanted to bring up or anything? Well, I uh, I am paying attention to Iowa State, like you said. They brought in T.J. Elselberger and a bunch of transfers, and uh, they have a true freshman point guard named Tyrese Hunter, and they've all just fit together perfectly so far. Mm-hmm. Tyrese Hunter has been at a high level. They also brought in Isaiah Brockington from Penn State. He's been shooting the lights out, and he did against Iowa. They've just been cruising, Yep, honestly, surprisingly. Yeah, and they're one of those teams, like I said, they're one of my favorite teams to watch because they, they move the ball so well, and they play really tough defense, so that's – it's kind of how they win the game. Yeah. Uh just playing good old fashioned basketball, which is my favorite thing. Um all right. So let's just move on to the NBA then. Biggest news of the NBA, Steph Curry is now your all-time three-point make leader of all time. And he did it in about half the games that Ray Allen has. <laughs> he just passed him. It actually took him a little while to do it. Uh, he had been struggling with his shot, I think, with the pressure of the record and everything. And now Steph Curry can ultimately say he is the greatest shooter of all time. It's crazy. And it shows you that because of the way that the game has changed, he's done it so much quicker than Ray Allen did. Because so, for so long, people talked about how good Ray Allen was as a shooter. And granted, in this day and age of the NBA, Ray Allen probably would have shot more and would have had more but at the same time if people people don't remember because you know we're getting old here when ray allen came into the league he was kind of a slasher and could dunk on people yes like people forget ray allen was like this athletic guard and he would take it to people uh so he didn't shoot a ton at the beginning of his career it was more towards the end of his career where he was just known as a specialist but it's it's similar to uh, guys like Andre Iguodala. People don't remember that Andre Iguodala came into the league averaging 25 points a game, just driving to the basket every game. So it's just one of those things. But Steph Curry, as soon as he came into the league, was chucking up threes all the time. Crazy to see. I'm sure somebody will eventually beat that record because it's just the nature of the game. But I think... Steph Curry is going to increase increase this lead for for a little while at least. And it's it's cool to see that you know somebody in our generation of players has done something like this. So, I think I think it's pretty pretty awesome. And again, it goes back to what we talked about last week about how Steph Curry is one of the greatest players of all time. Anything you want to add to that at all? Honestly, it is it's funny that you brought up the Ray Allen coming into the league slashing and he was still a great shooter but he was a different type of player when he first came in. Mm-hmm. There are so many tweets yesterday that I saw of I assume NBA watchers like under 18 of there was a move 
Steph Stephen Curry made against the Pacers where he crossed the bonus and did like a cool like reverse layup at the rim. Mm -hmm. And there were tons of people saying Ray Allen couldn't do this in his day. Ray yeah. Allen was never like this. Yeah. What is what is happening? People just don't know. Who people just don't know. I don't I don't understand why this this shouldn't be allowed to me. Like there there should be almost a like council or a board of like <laughs> people that that these 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 types of NBA fans just shouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Why is it the people that talk the loudest, the ones that know the least? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I said. Like people just don't realize. Like people are, like I said, I think Andre Iguodala is one of the best examples because people just talk about his role playing and how he helped the Warriors be this team. I remember he took over that Philadelphia 76ers franchise when AI left, and he was tough. And he would just dunk on people constantly. So for people to just not know. And again, Ray Allen was another guy that would dunk on people. And I mean, he was in a movie. Come on. You know nobody. Jesus you know, you know, you know young people know, know. anything about nope. he got game. <laughs> no, or they don't. Jesus Shuttlesworth. They don't. Which is more of the problem. Yeah. It proves my point. People today don't care about basketball. Yeah. And it, uh, it, it just... <laughs> It, it kills me. People don't care to know mm -hmm. about anything outside of like the past four years. Yeah. People know Ray Allen from when he was 35 in the NBA. So they I, saw a few videos of him shooting for Boston, and that's all yeah. they know. Or, or listen, I guess another fine example is one of my, my brother's favorite basketball player, Manu Ginobili. Listen, people uh, listen. don't know. I hate Manu Ginobili because he played for the Spurs, and the Pistons Spurs kind of was a rivalry. But that guy could play. The respect. The respect. People have for Manu Ginobili that know basketball. Yeah, is he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, and basketball watchers of today would look at his stats and the fact that he came off the bench for most of his career, and they'd be like, "What do you mean right. he's average? What do you what?" Yeah, it so annoying. Yeah, yeah. This is why I stay off of basketball on Twitter. <laughs> this is I like talking to you about basketball and a few of my friends that actually know. Like, whenever we talk about Manu, it literally turns into, like, a Manu Ginobili appreciation group <laughs> chat because we just go on for hours about how great that man was. Like, if you watch highlights of him in his last season, mm -hmm. he's still playing better than, like, half of the NBA. Yeah. Is, this, yeah. Was a, this was a Steph Curry thing, <laughs> and this just turned into yeah, me on my step complaining about the young people. Yeah, yeah. But it is what it is. Like you said, Steph Curry. It's is the the coolest thing is Ray Allen and Reggie were there for him. Right. Yeah. They they hugged him at half court before the game. Mm -hmm. They celebrated with him. Dell was there. Steph gave the basketball to him, and it was just the fact that he did it in Madison Square Garden. Yep. It's it's like the stars all aligned. Yeah. And it was, it was yeah. Yep. Was, he's he's if he's not top ten, I want to see who who else you have on your list. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it was a cool moment for the NBA. Um, like we said, everybody knew it was going to happen. But uh, now Steph just says that he's, he's chasing a single-game record that his teammate Klay Thompson has. So that would be cool to see as well. Outside of that, Pistons. Let's talk about them. <laughs> Still the worst team well, in the NBA. We really don't have to talk about the team. No, but there's it, a specific thing we have to I think to it's a little about. bit funny that the last time we even talked about the Pistons, they had four wins. And yeah. they still have four wins. Oh, they've they've gotten worse. <laughs> they've uh, got it. Got, it's gotten to the point where I'm pretty sure Dwayne Casey said we're not getting the results we want. Yeah. Out of Corey Joseph and some of the veterans. Oh really? So now. Oh really? <laughs> you don't say. So now we're gonna play Saban Lee more. Thank thank you, Dwayne. I'm telling you. Thank you for seeing. He, he Did opened, he watch the podcast? <laughs> listen, he he knows better than us. I'm ready to make a Saban Lee podcast. Saban Lee just didn't deserve to play at first. <laughs> it's obvious he wasn't good enough. Apparently. But now? Yeah. Now. Now he's ready. It's time. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, the the Pistons are atrocious, but it's it's okay. Um, it's funny because we've seen on the, West, on the Western Conference, Houston has had won seven straight. Without Jalen Green. Ever since they've played their veterans yeah. that come together to make a decent team. Yeah. The guys <laughs> that we saw games. play good last year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Eric Gordon is averaging like Those 20. Uh, Christian Wood is emerging again. Yep. Uh, OKC's gotten some wins here and there. 
New Orleans has got some wins. OKC okay, is honestly just as bad, but they have Shea. Yeah, and, they have Shea and like a few more dude. They're focused on their young guys. <laughs> yeah, and every once in a so, while, yeah. Lou Dort will drop thirty or so. Exactly. Um, but the only team above the Pistons is Orlando, and they're also atrocious. But the Pistons have lost twelve straight, so they now yeah. have broken the Rockets' record of Rockets. I thought I think lost eleven straight. Um, so yeah, the Pistons have taken over that. Honestly, outside of that game where they challenged Phoenix. And Kay Cunningham was going off. Mm-hmm. That game quickly ended in a loss too. Yeah. They looked awful in almost every. They almost game. beat the Wizards though. Wizards was in overtime. They lost by three. I, <laughs> I'm happy you brought it up because I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, I do not remember. But after I saw them get slaughtered by the Pelicans, I was like, ah, yeah, I'm good on this. Yep, I was nervous though. Um, who was it? Uh, when Trey Lyles was announced, like it was thought that he was going to start in place of Jeremy Grant because he's been hurt. I got real nervous, uh, but he didn't. And he only played eight minutes in the game. And they played kind of a small ball lineup with Sadiq Bey, Beef Stew, Cade, Killian, and uh, Diallo, which is nice to see. And look at that. My guy Saban Lee against Brooklyn the other night. Played 28 minutes, had 17 points, six rebounds, and six assists. I did watch some of that game because Cade was going crazy once again. Yeah. Yep, but, Cade yeah. was closing in on a triple-double somewhat. Uh, but, yeah, Cade has been he's, – he's kind of turning into as advertised at this point, which is the very positive part. Um, Pistons aren't going to play until – oh, tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry. They play the Pacers tomorrow. I was looking at the postponed game of the Bulls. Um, again, I, there's not – not much for the Pistons. It's kind of like the Lions or many of the other teams around Detroit. We want to see them do good, but ultimately, if they win or lose, it doesn't matter. It does not matter at all. No. It doesn't um, matter. Most of the standings haven't changed a ton, necessarily. New York has fallen down, though. I will say that. They Yeah. They've they're, struggled. There are major problems in yeah. New York. But they, they have had... Um, some tough games, and they've been close in a lot of those games. They just can't get the wins. Um, and then Indiana, surprisingly, is shopping their big guys. It seemed like they were already, like, somewhat... Giving up? No, but they, they invested in all the young guys they wanted. Yeah. And now they're saying they might rebuild. Yeah. And they brought in a coach in Rick, Rick Carlisle that has dealt with, like, two rebuilds in Dallas already. Yep. It's just a weird situation. Yeah. Especially since they just recently invested in several young guys. Yeah. I'm not sure what they're trying to do, but Indiana is supposedly shopping around Karis LeVert, DeMontis Sabonis, and Miles Turner. So I'm sure some team wants those guys. Those are all quality players. So break it down and play through Chris Duarte? I don't know. I guess. Twenty one win season? <laughs> they still got Brogdon there though, so I don't I don't know. Having Malcolm Brogdon on a terrible, that's something I don't want to see. Yeah. He is a real winning player. You yeah. you can't do that to Malcolm Brogdon. Yeah. Pacers are in a weird spot. Um, let's see. Golden State and Phoenix still run in the West. Uh, Memphis, though. I do want to talk about Memphis for a minute. They've uh, They're playing great without Ja. They've just been good. They've just been a yeah. tough, tough team. Like, classic Memphis teams of Tony Allen and Zach Randolph. They're just... Playing hard nosed defense. Speaking of Zach Randolph, they just recently retired his jersey. Congratulations. Yes. One of my favorite players. Yeah. Um, of all time. I think we need to take a minute and talk about a city and a team that we hate and don't really care about. The Cleveland Cavaliers. All right. They're seventeen and twelve. And they just beat the Heat. Fourth seed. Yeah. Colin Sexton out. Darius Garland having injury problems. Ricky Rubio just stepping in. But Evan Mobley looking like a young Tim Duncan. Yeah. J- him and Jared Allen look like the perfect combination. Like you said, Ricky Rubio playing great basketball. Mm-hmm. Kevin Love hit six threes in the first half the other night. I was going to say, Kevin Love has been – he's been minute restricted because they want to play their young guys. But he's been having a couple 20-point games in 20 minutes uh, here and there. Yeah, so. but even like besides them, like – uh, what's his name? Lamar Stevens, dude from Penn State, mm-hmm. only like twenty three. He's playing well. They're getting Jetty Osmond, decent 
as usual. Yep. Like Isaac Okoro is getting better. Lori Markinen, which I thought was a good pickup for them. Uh, I mean, yeah, Cleveland's Cleveland's kind of around. The fact that they actually like they're improving <laughs> without LeBron James. Yeah, they, they should. We should take note of it. Even though Cleveland sucks, sorry, Chris. Even yeah. though Cleveland sucks, yep, they they deserve a little bit of praise for what they've done so far. Yeah, because if they actually finish in the top eight, would that be? Like the second biggest thing in Cleveland Cavaliers history. It could if be. They, if they make the playoffs without LeBron with all these young players. Yeah, I think so. It just might. Yeah, especially if they don't have to make it into the play-in, play-in tournament. Yeah. I could see it. So, yeah, it's crazy. There are a lot of teams dealing with some issues and looking at trades right now. Yeah. Like, what is what does Boston do? You got Tatum and Brown, and you can't really trust anything outside of them. Well, they did just get Brown back, so hopefully there's – some continuity that they get back for but, that. But, but you got old Al Horford. He's playing pretty well, though, to be honest. But he's still old Al Horford. Yeah, yeah. And Marcus Smart is honestly just going to be Marcus Smart. Yeah. I don't, I don't think his – he's not holding the ear of the young guys anymore, really. Right. I figured Peyton Pritchard would make a little bit of a jump. He's kind of just, like, leveled out. Right. I, I don't know what they do. Do, do they just, like, play another two years with, with Tatum and Brown and just see what happens? Yeah. I'm not sure either. I, I'm, I'm really not. They might need to make a big move because if they don't, they've just wasted, like, six years yeah. of good young talent. Yeah. NBA's in a weird spot right now. You vary. Um, and they're going through a lot of COVID stuff. We've seen the Bulls have to postpone a couple of games. We're seeing other players go into the protocols. James Harden was just the most recently one announced. So, who knows? But, I want to get into the NFL now. Because they also have COVID issues. There's one thing we forgot to talk about in the NBA. What is that? The the big guy, New Orleans. Oh, yeah. Okay, we can talk about that real quick. Zion Williamson has suffered some setbacks. Yeah. Um, And uh, apparently now there's no timetable for return. I'm very fearful that he's going to miss another season. There are some people that are fearful, fearful that this might be it. It could be. It very well could be. Um, and it is it is sad to see. And I've seen a lot of people compare it to the Charles Barkley thing uh, with Charles intentionally gaining weight and not wanting to play for the team. I don't see that here. It, it's a difference. I it feel like difference. it is just a complete disregard for his health, necessarily. Him and the organization. Yes, yes. On both sides. Because, like, Charles was – doing it intently he had an intent to not play for that team zion doesn't look like like even if he might not want to play for the pelicans it doesn't it doesn't look like he's just doing that to get off the team it just looks like he's not does it look like he cares no (laughs) it's like he's just not (laughs) taking care of his body does it look like he cares he's like being ben simmons about his own health it seems like where he just I don't know. It's, but it's the hard thing to is, say. He's, he's not acting like a baby like Ben. Right. But it's clear that he's mentally, like, still a kid. Yeah, like, he's just not... He, yeah. He's not there, like... I don't know. It, it's weird. I, I don't get it, I guess. The crazy thing is... Maybe if, it is a Charles If he was Barkley drafted thing. by the Knicks, do you think this would have happened? I don't know. That's where it's, that's where I, it's hard I don't to think, say. I don't know. I don't think it would have. It, maybe. I, I think mean, New, Orleans, where, New Orleans, honestly, probably might have been the worst situation for him. In terms of location and organization. I thought it was good because it, it would be like LaMelo Ball where, you know, you're in a smaller org. You don't have as much of the spotlight on you necessarily, even though you thrived, are number one. He thrives in the spotlight, though. Maybe. That could be. That's why before the dra- every time some people asked him about the Knicks, he smiled from ear to ear. Yeah. He was just, ah, oh, I want to be a New York Knick. I, uh, yeah. He was just so happy about it. Now, to be fair, for his career sake, I hope that it is like a Charles Barkley scenario. And that if he leaves, he goes to some better scenario and he just goes off. But I'm almost scared like it's almost it's gone too far to where he's not going to be able to get back to that that guy because his game is predicated on his athleticism. Yes. And now with all these foot injuries, those tend to pile up once they start. So I'm just nervous that that's going to hinder him the rest of his career and it seems like he's not he's not going to get into the, in the best shape of his life right 
which is the number one thing that needs to happen. Yeah. I don't need, I, 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 for some reason doubt New Orleans has said that to his face. Yeah. That you, you need to get into the best shape of your life and stop playing around. Right. Do you think they've said that to him? I don't know. But or, or they're just like appeasing his ego. I don't know. And saying everything is okay. Because you would think though that he would hear all the ESPN chatter about it and all the memes and jokes. I, I don't know. I just I I don't know. It's it's sad to see to be honest because he's one of the players that a lot of people thought would take over the league and kind of be the face of the league going forward. He averaged twenty seven and nine last year. Yeah. Honestly, not even playing his like hard right he played hard sometimes yep and it, it, he just easily averaged 27 and 9 yeah he wasn't his natural self exactly yeah i agree like is it is it is really sad that those duke highlights that one year at duke mm-hmm. might be the most the best version of him we've ever seen and that's it yeah so we'll have to wait and see but yeah it's a developing story Anyway, moving on to the NFL. We got just under 15 minutes left. Um, Malik beat me in picks again by one. Uh, I'm not even going to say say that one more time. I'm not going to be petty. We're getting near the end of the season. Is it, we gotta, is, there's no reason. We got to make some miracle runs here. <laughs> um, but it's looking real grim with three weeks left in the season. Miracles are possible. Yeah. What If you, like, route me these next three weeks, yeah. you could beat me handily. There's a chance. Possible. But there's not a ton of games that are favorable to go 50-50 on. But we'll see. Starting with Thursday's game, Kansas City at the Chargers. This should be a good Thursday night game. Uh, Kansas City just coming off a blowout of the Raiders. Justin Herbert's back on track. Yeah, the Chargers are looking good. Austin Eckler is a little banged up, but he's supposed to be good to go for tomorrow. Uh, so I'm hoping that this becomes a shootout. Could be a real 50-50. Yeah. So I'm going to let you pick first. Oh, man. You got to be confident to get back in this. No oh mans. Pick confidently. Well, then I want to take the Even though it is 50-50. I want to take the Chiefs because their defense has looked way better. So you're taking the Chiefs? Yes. You you <laughs> you said that like you were asking, I want to take the Chiefs. Take the Chiefs. Yes, I'm taking the Chiefs. And I will take the Chargers. Okay. There it is. Confidence, sir. Confidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard for me to have confidence at this point. All right, we have some Saturday games for the next two weeks. We got some Saturday games, which is very interesting. So, full weekend of games. Las Vegas at Cleveland. Cleveland has <laughs> the most COVID cases I've seen. Baker Mayfield might be out for this game. Kareem Hunt's already out for this game. Austin Hooper might be out for this game. Uh, their left, their starting left tackle might be out for this game, and uh, their starting guard might be out for this game so cleveland's pretty banged up i don't even know who their backup quarterback is actually at the moment case Um, keenum oh that's right so maybe they're not in trouble oh jarvis landry is also out so use their uh all their backup wide receivers we'll see las vegas they're coming off a disappointing loss to kansas city so can they bounce back both teams are in the playoff hunt so this is an important game for both games I'm going to go with Cleveland, though. I think this is a game that I can actually go with Cleveland. Cleveland has a lot of their defense still in this game, and I think their defense is their strong suit. Going with the Browns. You're going with the Browns? Yep. I'm going with the teams I don't like. I'm going with Oakland. Okay. Thank you. Derek Carr is great one week, average the next. It's true. And the team isn't good enough to sustain that inconsistency. Yeah. I'm just going to assume this is one of the great ones. Can New England knock off Indianapolis? Or can Indianapolis knock off New England? Because New England has been untouchable lately. Mac Jones in his last game only had to throw three passes. Their defense has been top-notch. But Indianapolis does have Jonathan Taylor, the best running back in the league at the moment. Colts also have a good defense. Can I pick first? Go ahead. <laughs> Make it easy on me. I mean, you could just pick the team I pick if that if that's what you want to do. That's what do. I really wanted to do. If that's what you want to do. <laughs> I mean true. I'm going with New England and the Mac attack. I figured you would. Yes. Bilichek is painting 
a Picasso right now with this team. J.C. Jackson looks like – is it J.C. or J.Q. Jackson? J.C. J.C. He's looking like the best corner in football the past month. Mm-hmm. The defense has just been balling overall, and the offense is just consistent. Whether they run it 90% of the time or they run it 50% of the time, yep. they're going to be productive. So, Pats all the way. And I am going to go with Jonathan Taylor. Because New England has not seen something like Jonathan Taylor. I don't doubt you. So he could be the MVP because he, he he's well like be. 700 yards ahead in the <laughs> the yeah. rushing race. And again, both these teams in the playoff hunt. So both teams looking for the win. I think Carson Wentz plays it uh, careful enough to dodge New England's defense. And I think the Colts defense is actually going to make Mac Jones a little uncomfortable, which he hasn't seen a whole ton of. Carolina at Buffalo. Carson Wentz against that defense is going to be pretty scary. Maybe. Pretty scary. Uh, Carolina at Buffalo, Buffalo. <laughs> Carolina's looked so bad. That that Cam Newton celebration was so short-lived. Yes, it was. He's screaming, I'm back. Good first game, and then... <sighs> yep. He's gotten benched. Up in smoke. Gotten benched mid-game for P.J. Walker. Yeah. They say that Cam Newton's still going to start this week, which... I guess it's just because they have to commit to him, but... Nobody circles their wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Can't trust the cam train anymore. No. Arizona at Detroit. I've taken Detroit the last two weeks. Do it. I can't do it again. Do it! (laughs) I can't do it again. (laughs) Arizona. (laughs) Kyler did struggle against the Rams last week. They struggle at home so much. It is so strange. Yep. And now they get to face the lowly Detroit Lions... I'm scared to see that one. The Jets at the Dolphins. Dolphins are all of a sudden back in the playoff race again, just like they did last year. It's going to be funny how people opinions change if they're all of a sudden a wild card team. (laughs) Yeah. Well, their defense has kind of figured it out. They've changed their schemes a bit. They've done some weird stuff on defense, and it's made other teams very confused. I'm going with Miami on this one. Two has been playing good, really good football, too. You know, if Joe Flacco was quarterback, maybe I'd trust the Jets a little bit more. Really? Yeah. Uh, you're saying it with a straight face, too, but you, you have a little bit of a smirk. Yeah, because it's sad to see how Zach Wilson has played. Joe Flacco himself. They also don't have Elijah Moore, their best wide receiver. So, Yeah, give me the fins. Yeah. Dallas at the Giants. Is Micah Parsons an MVP candidate? He's a man amongst men. He's a monster. He is a rookie amongst veterans. He is, he's number eleven. Yeah, that's that's what he is. Crazy to 12 see twelve sacks on the season. Dallas's defense has turned things around while their offense is struggling, and the Giants are going backwards. Daniel Jones probably out for the year. They got Mike Glennon in the back. Saquon is looking all right, but uh, they're a mess. I can't I can't pick them. I gotta go Dallas. It's just not a, a risk enough that I want to take. Going to take the Giants. Oh, my gosh, Malik. <laughs> You're just trying to make it interesting. I'm going to take the and I appreciate G-Men. That. I appreciate it. What if they actually – listen. I'm so upset. The random chances I've taken in the past month. They've worked out. A good amount of them have hit. Yeah. This one, though, if this hits. <laughs> yeah. That'll be rough. Amen. G-Men. Washington at Philadelphia. I'm going to flip the script on you. I'm taking Philadelphia. Oh, this is what I like. I'm back. This is what I like right here. I'm back on the Philly train. I love it. They're coming off their bye week. I think they're ready to go. You're Minshew mania. You're all, you're down with the mustache and the, they're going to go go with Jalen Hurts, but. Then are you sure? (laughs) Yeah, I still believe. Okay. Then give me the football team. Okay. Both these teams also both right around that playoff hunt. So, uh, this should be a good one. Tennessee at Pittsburgh. Tennessee's a weird team. Pittsburgh's a weird team. Pittsburgh, I, I wish they didn't come back in that Minnesota game. I think that was more about Minnesota than Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh sucks. Yeah. And, Min- and Kirk Cousins just turned into trash mm-hmm. and let them walk back into the game. Yeah. Tennessee. Okay. I was uh, pretty confident. Yes. I am going to take Pittsburgh. You do that. Because I think Ben, Ro- ben Roethlisberger has actually looked better recently. And Tennessee, I still don't know. They beat Jacksonville. You trust last that week. Steelers O line? That's what you're saying. They 
you trust Tennessee who just beat Jacksonville 20 yes. to zero? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, anybody can beat Jacksonville. Ask me again, yes. And here we go. Houston at Jacksonville. The best game of the year. Davis Mills. This Trevor is the Lawrence. Christmas present we've all been waiting for. Holy moly, has Trevor Lawrence looked bad. Amen. I know it's part of the program. The program's been incredibly horrendous. Urban he, Meyer keeps getting himself into deeper and deeper water. He's in a terrible situation, but and Tre- it looks like it. But Trevor has not played well. He either. hasn't. Uh, Davis Mills actually had a pretty good game last week. He was our, He was decent. Yeah. I, I don't know who to take in this game. Do you want to pick first? Because I'll just take the option. Give me that mess in Jacksonville. Okay. And I will take Houston. Yeah, every, every time Trevor drops back, it looks like he's he almost doesn't know where to go. Yeah. And if I was the quarterback for the Jaguars, I'd probably feel the exact same way. Yeah. Cincinnati at Denver. Cincinnati got an upsetting loss last week. Denver got an easy win over the Lions. Very easy. Also, RIP Demarius Thomas. Yeah. That was a cool. Number 88. One of the most underrated receivers of this generation. Yes. That was a cool shout out that they did to him last week. So. And, yeah, I've heard he was an amazing man. Yes. That's what everybody says. So, yep. Sad for Denver fans, but they got the win over the Lions, which, thankfully, that's who they got to play on Sunday. This game. Also has some playoff implications because Cincinnati, if they lose this game, they're basically almost out of the playoff race, I believe, at this point. Or it makes it very tough for them. And Denver is kind of getting back into it. Uh, Can I pick first? Go for it, please. I'll take the opposite. I think since since he gets it done, they I think they know what this season means and how much progress this could make yeah. for that team overall. Jamar Chase is just a – generational might be the tag you need to put on him. Yeah. Because he's having a Randy Moss, like, he's, he's, he's that level of freak. Yeah. And well, people, not, not exactly the level of Randy Moss. And, and it's crazy because. But he's an, he's an absolute freak. And it's crazy because people are forgetting about T. Higgins, and he's been going off lately. Yeah. Jamar Chase has just been the highlight reel. Um, I'm going to go with Denver, though, that their defense is going to be able to slow Joe Mixon. Cincinnati likes to run the ball first. And Denver has two running backs compared to one for Cincinnati. So that's my logic. Atlanta at San Francisco. San Francisco, uh, George Kittle being a man amongst boys in the league the last two weeks. Uh, first to end or over, go over 150 yards two weeks in a row. Craziness. Atlanta's terrible, but they got the win last week. Again, I still don't know what this team is. San Francisco, I will take the 49ers. You'll take the Niners? Yeah. So will I. <clears throat> They're starting to get uh, pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. George Kittle has played several games in a row. It seems like for the first time in forever. Yep. It seems like him and Bosa have been hurt for long stretches for a minute. We know who whatever running back they play is, is going to be productive for the most part. Mm-hmm. And uh, let me look at Jimmy G's stats for the season really quickly. 17 touchdowns and interceptions. He's been okay. Decent. 13th in QBR. He's he's mid-level in like every single stat. Mm-hmm. I, I'll trust the safety of Jimmy G. Yeah. Seattle at the Rams. Taking the Rams. Seattle, although they won last week, they found Rashad Penny. Uh, they found a running back to replace Chris Carson since he's been out. Um, but I don't think it's enough. I think the Rams' defense is too good. I don't think the Rams get the win. They're going to start riding towards the playoffs. I'm also going to take the Rams. I'm sorry, Russ. You're still my guy. But even with the Rams having COVID uh, problems, I think they, they're hitting a groove. Yeah. And Cooper Cup, man, not enough is being said no. about the absolute tear. He's, he's, he's having like almost an all-time great season. He is. He's the first. He's, he's been ridiculous. First player with over, like, a thousand yards and twelve touchdowns in thirteen games or something like that. So craziness. Yeah. Green Bay at Baltimore. Baltimore might be without Lamar Jackson, but it's not for sure yet. Uh, Green Bay's kind of getting their groove on. Green Bay getting their groove on. Yeah, they've been playing I like pretty that good. Description. Uh, I think I have to go Green Bay. As much as I would love to take Baltimore with Lamar Jackson being uncertain, I can't. I'll go Green Bay, too. Yeah. 
New Orleans at Tampa Bay. I am also taking Tampa Bay. So am I. No, no, no need to waste time on that one. Taysom Hill is just kind of a show. Uh, Minnesota at Chicago for Monday night. I actually think this could be fun. Um, Minnesota, they've been heartbroken so many times. And the Bears hung in with the Packers actually pretty well last week. I'm going to go with the Chicago upset here. I think Justin Fields might have a game. And it's going to be, it might be a slowed down game with David Montgomery and Dalvin Cook. So, but I'm going to go with the Bears. I'm going to go Minnesota. Fair enough. Justin Jefferson is just a monster. Dalvin Cook, still really good. That that second half against the Pittsburgh was so strange. I feel like that won't happen again. Yeah. Yeah. Even though they're just a middle-of-the-road solid team, and it could happen again. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I'm just going to trust the Vikings in this one. Fair enough. All right, that is all the time we have for today. Next week, oh, boy, what will we do next week? Because next week is Christmas. We might have to skip next week. Unless we do, we could do it Tuesday, maybe. We'll have to look. Um, Otherwise, we'll be back after Christmas, and then we'll have some more to discuss, uh, and we'll get uh, some more. We might, well, we'll be able to do bowl previews in our next episode, probably, uh, no matter when it is. And then... uh, We'll see what else happens in college basketball and NBA and NFL. This has been Views from the Sidelines. I'm Joey Tyson, my partner, Molly Kill. We'll see you guys next time. <sighs> Bowl season coming up. Michigan in the playoff, and they just picked up some major guys on signing day. It's great to be a Wolverine. Except for basketball.